I'm here with Jeffrey Moore again. And in the last video, we talked about how writing it's, it's kind of different things for different folks. You have writing as expression, that's for the writer. And then you have writing as something that might inform you or entertain you as a reader. And there it's a, it's a product, something something you're looking at. And we talked about the a potential process. Anyone there, there are multiple ways of, of tackling it for for the for the writer. But I guess how does a reader look at the product or evaluate the product? This is an interesting situation. In particular, um, writing in the context of college writing or the, what we often call the freshman writing requirement, um, there's actually a, a very large body of uh, standards, if you will, uh, around what constitutes uh, good and effective writing in, in an academic context. And, and they carry over actually quite well to a business context. Um, you can apply the model also to informal and creative writing, but it doesn't apply as well. So this is primarily, think about primarily in the context of essay writing. In that context, there are three traditions of value that, that the readers that readers seek in in, in, a, in a strong in a, an effective essay. The first is is logic, and then and and you actually make sense. You actually make sense, and logic tends to be about the world. So basically, what, what I'm what I want logic to do is to represent forces in the world and give me a map for avoiding the bad ones or or mitigating them in some way and leveraging the good ones. And, 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 and w when you're using language in that context, it's actually a power tool. And so you want, you know, like you have saws and you have hammers and you have stuff that you have nouns and verbs and modifiers, but basically they're power tools and they're designed to give you mastery over the world. That's what you want. And so logic is about, you know, it, are you in fact, do I in fact believe the, 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 um, the way you're representing the world, in fact, corresponds to the world. And, 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 and an example of, uh, of, I always like to use bad examples. Yeah. So an example of bad logic would be um, my, my cat enjoys drinking milk Therefore, I should be president of the United States. <laughs> that, that would be yeah. There's a connection between between your cat and milk and the presidency. I've little, read things like that. Yeah. I've, <laughs> well, if you want to be president bad enough, anything would right. be a sign. <laughs> yes. So cause and effect is one whole. There's one whole domain of logic around cause and effect. There's a whole set of domains around categories. Does, does you know? Uh, does does the cat belong in the category of pet or in the category of you know sex object? And you think, well, oh, well I no. suppose. I but, guess that, that's but, becoming more politically <laughs> relevant now. <laughs> but but no, actually, I, I actually okay. would be fun. I'd be fun to uh, parse some political speeches with you because yeah. I think that's they're they're they tend to be empty of actual logic. Well, they are because they're so good at the second one. Mm. So the second value cluster is around rhetoric. Mm. So if logic is about being uh, aligned with the world as it is and, and, and being uh, understanding the forces in the world, rhetoric is aligning with the reader and, and, and with the audience. In, uh, in, in writing, it's the reader, but in speaking, of course, it's the audience. And in video, it, we call it the audience. Even it's like, though it's like connecting. It's, it's connecting. It's connecting and, 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 it's, and, and you're you're working backward from the values of the reader. So if the reader wants to hear something, a good rhetorician will figure out a way for the reader to hear that. Mm. Now, now, if I say politician instead of rhetorician, it seems almost synonymous, right? I see. And the political speech is primarily designed to excite the desire to vote. Mm. And so what I need to do is to make you believe in my speech that I am speaking your heart. Yeah. And if I can speak your heart, then, then that's good. Now, the problem with voting is because you have to get a majority of votes, you have to create the illusion that you're speaking a majority of hearts. It's almost impossible to actually do that. Yeah. Hence, you get the logic. And the more logic you put into the speech, the more likely you're going right. to alienate So, I, and, and as I, I mean, my cat example was a little bit ridiculous. But an example of you hear this all the time in politics on both sides of the aisle is, you know, how dare my opponents want to raise taxes? The taxes are your money. And how dare my opponents want to cut benefits? The benefits, those are your benefits. I say we can do both. Do you, you, I mean, you hear that all the time. <laughs> you do. And, and basically, uh, you know, it, it's like, uh, the, 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 and, and if, when they get away from the pulpit, uh, what, what the thing was actually rather discouraging about the United States government right now is even when they get away from the microphone, they don't give it up. Right. So, 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 so. Well, they, I always say the best way to be a convincing salesperson is to believe it yourself. Yes, they, right? and, so they believe they, that they, they can, they, they can, they can reduce revenue <laughs> and increase spending, and nothing bad will. And, and, and Avi, I forgot to talk. And they also will talk about how bad the deficit is. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and, and they'll okay, say the those three things at well, the same you, time. Or, or even with, or they'll retreat to a highly polarized position. But mm -hmm. what they, what they won't do is, what they won't do is get real. So the right. problem. So we're, we're in the domain of rhetoric. 
we're not in the domain right. of logic. So the and and so you see these things like the people that had to make the promise that I the pledge that no new taxes no matter what. That's actually a rhetorical strategy, not a logical strategy. It doesn't. It's just not. It doesn't have to do with the forces in the world. It has to do with aligning. Right. With They're appealing the pe- people values that right. taxes are infringing on my right. rights, right. my personal property, right. etc. Now, rhetoric is incredibly important because. If you do not engage the values of your audience, you, they will not act in ways that are constructive mm. for, to your strategic intent. So you, we shouldn't think of rhetoric as dishonest. No. Um, uh, empty logic, r- rhetoric paired with empty logic is dishonest. Mm. But logic without rhetoric is often um, uh, correct but ineffective. It's, because it's cold. It's it, like it, a computer program. It's like a law. It's like a legal document. It's like most of the textbooks that you're eviscerating right now <laughs> with this program. <laughs> okay. Right? Not all of them because some of them are, are appalling on all three, but uh, all, all three standards. So there's logic and there's rhetoric. And then there's the third one is grammar. Mm. So grammar is actually a set of conventions. And when, when people say, I don't like writing, it's often because they had their nose rubbed in grammar. Yes. And they really didn't learn anything about logic and rhetoric. And so there was no power. Grammar is, is – yeah. so if, if logic is being true to the world and rhetoric is being true to the audience, what grammar is being true to is the linguistic tradition. Mm. Actually, you're being true to a set of conventions of the ruling class of your society yes. at the time you're on earth. So, grammar, so that you sound like you're a member of the ruling class. Exactly. That's what the grammatical rules are designed to align you with the language conventions of the ruling class. And, and of course, colonial. one of the more offensive things about colonialism is that it, it takes the language of the ruling class of one country and seeks to impose it on the language habits of people in other countries. So, and, and there's a lot of, I mean, obviously. I've had many people try to get me to stop saying y'all. Y'all. I, I refuse. <laughs> it's, I'm a rebel. It's, stay with it. And, and, and part of that, by the way, is y'all is, is actually has a rhetorical effect, in, in America at mm. least, which which is very disarming and kind of you all it's kind of like we all we're kind of we're all in this together and we're not snooty and we're kind of down to earth and we drive red pickup trucks and you know try right. to get along with people. Yes. So okay, I don't, so, I don't drive a pickup truck. Oh well, I'm, then I'm you're prob- well, then you're probably not an Alabama I, native. I mean, yes, I'm, I'm well, thinking we don't want to offend anyone we'll in Alabama. There. Well, we the red pickup trucks are not. I'm offensive. from Louisiana, and to us, Alabama okay. was a perfectly fine place. <laughs> <laughs> you next door neighbors. Okay, well, with the, this West Coast prejudice stuff will get out. Yes, of you have okay. biases. You I, I, should I, I visit totally, Alabama. I totally, no, I'm I, actually I, taking offense now. Okay, okay, you good. Should, keep, you should, keep working. Keep you working. should visit Alabama. Well, I, I'm, nice. a, I'm a tree hugger from Oregon, so yeah. I have my own yeah. sort of mossy problems. But, okay, so there's three. There's three. There's three then sort of disciplines. And in fact, in the Roman times and in the medieval curriculum and in the mm. Renaissance curriculum, they were called the trivium, mm. which stands for three things: logic, rhetoric, and grammar. And so for thousands of years. These three, these three value systems. Your were ability taught. to cite things in Latin, yes, makes you part of the ruling class in my mind. That we, it, 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 you've we, just trumped me. You just <laughs> seem smarter than no, me. No, now. no, 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 no. no the, 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 the ruling class of about the 18th century. Okay, no, it was, yeah. <laughs> Isaac still, Newton. Still. Isaac Newton wrote Principia uh, in, exactly, in Latin, right? Exactly. But not so much writing in Latin these days as it was. Now, the other thing that makes this comp- so that's that's complicated enough because you say, well, is my writing logical? Is my writing rhetorical? Is my writing grammatical? That's one thing. Mm-hmm. But then the next thing you, you find about language, which is so fascinating is if you start like – it's like working from atoms to molecules to, to tissues to organs to mm-hmm. organisms. Language atomically – I mean I guess you get down to letters. But we normally start with words. So, mm-hmm. so words is kind of like the base place you start with language. And it says, OK, I'm going to learn a bunch of things about words. And you, know, you learn about nouns. You learn about verbs. You learn about modifiers and conjunctions. And these, these help you kind of the building blocks of, of language. And then you, and you use them to write sentences. And one of the things you discover fairly early on in life is – you can know everything about all the words and still write bad sentences. Yes. Uh, so sentences. So there's what that means is there's an emergent property as you move up a layer in the system's hierarchy from the word to the sentence, a bunch of properties appear that were not present at the lower level. Yeah. Just like hydrogen's a gas, oxygen's a gas. You put them together, you get water. Who knew it, it was wet? Yes. And heavy. Yes. It's like who knew? Right. Uh, so the emergent properties. So there's stuff that happens at the sentence level that you mm. would not detect by just a bag of a bag of words. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing happens when you go from sentences to paragraphs. So when you put sentences together in a paragraph, all of a sudden there's a set of relationships that that need to be uh, that the reader is expecting or, 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 or looking to engage with, that, that you you could write perfect sentences and write horrible paragraphs. Right. Right. The last one is from the paragraph to the essay. That mm. one actually isn't as hard. If you can write good paragraphs, you're going to come 
pretty close to having most of the values of the essay, but there are some new things that happen at the essay level uh, with introductions and conclusions in particular yeah. that you don't have at the paragraph level. So now you've got a three by four matrix. Mm. So you oh, got I three. Yeah, I inadvertently, okay, yeah, okay, I inadvertently yeah, drew a three uh, by a four or a four by three. Or oh, that's fine. Right, it's perfect. You got it right there. So now uh, if you would just there. draw that, this becomes this becomes an interesting thing. So what, I, what if you're really saying, I want to master the college writing requirement from the point of view of the product, meaning I need to create a college-level product, or if I'm in business, I need to create a board-level product, or, or a, uh, I'm trying to create a marketing requirements document, or I'm trying to create a functional specification, or I'm going to write a, a manual for, for teaching people how to, how to use something. If you're doing any technical writing, academic writing, business writing, marketing, communication writing, this is the matrix. These 12 squares are the magic squares. They, they are the 12 squares where you say in each one of those squares there's a set of values or there's mm. a set of attributes that make for good writing or conversely would, if, you, if you did not meet those standards you would make for bad writing. And so all of a sudden it became an interesting question when you were, we were teaching writing to realize, you know, not every writer is equally good or equally bad at all 12 squares. Yeah, yeah. And so it became a, the first the first way we used this was actually as a diagnostic. We said, well, let's just look at a large sample of your writing and let's go through and assess it in, against these 12 squares. So so if I look at your vocabulary, mm -hmm. so are, are you able to, to, to discriminate with words from the point of view of getting very precise about mm. the forces you're talking about? That's right. logic. Logic, right. right? Decision. Are you able to pick words that are apt for the situation? So are they, are they the right tone? Do they have the right nuances? That's rhetoric. Yeah, the word apt was very apt. Yeah, there we, <laughs> yeah, 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 there we go. <laughs> and, 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 then, and then thirdly, can you, spell, can you spell words correctly? And can you, yes. can you hyphenate them correctly at the end of a line? I mean, those, those would be, that'd be word grammar. Right. right. And then you go up to the sentence level and you say, okay, now sentence logics. Well, can you put the subject and the verb together? Do they, do, do, do they, do make, they, do sense. they make sense? Right. Yeah. Do, are, are we connecting? Is, is, is the claim, which is usually in the verb phrase, fitting the topic, which is usually in the noun phrase or the subject? And so right. sentence logic. And then again, sentence rhetoric. Do you, can you do short sentences combined with long sentences? Right. Can, you, can you begin a sentence with a, with a, with a, uh, a, 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 a like an adverb, like, although I'm thinking yeah. this. It's aesthetic. It's it's emotive. It's it's. I mean, it's still the apt, appropriate kind of continues. It is, and, and often this is called style. Yeah. And 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 you know, style maketh the man. Is so. There's people have their own styles, but readers also expect different styles in different situations, and so they expect a very curt style when they're looking at a stop sign or, or right. some warning sign. Yes. And they expect a more elaborate yeah, a stop style. sign that said, uh, "Please try to <laughs> slow down as you approach this intersection." Might not. <laughs> not as good. Yeah, yeah. And conversely, if you're like proposing marriage, like yes. Wanna is probably yeah. not the right style. So, so, so therefore, you know, style of sentences and then sentence grammar and that, you know, subject verb agreement, and comma yeah. splicing and all the kinds of things. That, yeah. That stuff. Which most people, that's kind of the core grammar that most people kind of associate it with It is. And, and yeah. I have to say it's probably one of the least, it's, it's one of the most important squares from the point of view of superficial creating an impression. Right. It's a little bit like table manners. Yes. The truth is table manners do not affect your ability to feed yourself. Right. But they do, people do judge you on your table manners. Right. They judge you on your sentence grammar too. But it's, it is, it's a ruling class. I mean, it literally That's is what I've always found it fascinating. Thing. Out of all the standardized tests, the one that emphasizes grammar the most is the GMAT for business school because they recognize if you want to, if you want to, you know, they always say like, you know, dress for the job you want. <laughs> well, this is this is this is exactly what that's exactly what grammar is. Grammar is the dressing that you put on your language. So, right. so, 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 being well dressed doesn't mean you have you. You could still be an empty suit, yes. but the tie is done very well. There, there, you could be grammatically correct and be completely empty of any meaning or emotion or anything. Right. Many of us have had teachers of that nature, but we won't go there. <laughs> so, so then you go up, <laughs> well, you go up to the next. Well, the wonderful <laughs> thing, by the way, obviously both you and I had it at some point mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. You get a handful of teachers in your life that just transform you. No, they, absolutely. They, they just, they just, and, then, and then the other ones don't matter. So, okay. So, so we go to the paragraph level and, 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 and the essay level. So at the paragraph level, the logic is more about 
I'm building an argument about how things work in the world. Is mm-hmm. it, does it hold together? It claims, evidence, warrants, things like that. Uh, and this is where the logic starts to really build. It does. Now, now you're really building yeah. a model of the world is what you're doing with that logic. And the rhetoric has to do with, can I take you through a set of generalizations and specific, I go back and forth yeah. between examples and, going, and, and abstract. If I stay too abstract too long, I'll lose you. If I stay too concrete right. too long, you won't get the idea. In paragraph grammar, there's actually very little in paragraph grammar. There's just a few conventions. And right. then you go to the highest level, which is the essay itself. Right. And at the logic level, it, it, this is where you say, I have a thesis, and then mm-hmm. I have component arguments that support the thesis. How does that all build? Uh, on the rhetoric side, it's I have an introduction, I have a body, and I have a conclusion. How does that all flow? Mm. And then on the grammar That's interesting. St- I, I like how you're differentiating between thesis and introduction. Yeah. It, a thesis is like, what's the whole point? Like, yeah. What's the argument I'm making? What, or what do I want to... Like, this is what I'm going to convince you. While introduction is like, let me gently bring you into this nice feeling that so you like me so that you want to read the rest of it and and so you tee up the introduction is to tee up the thesis and and you, it only needs to be as long as you think it needs to get the reader or audience from wherever they are when you think you're going to encounter them to be prepared to hear your thesis and so that's the the journey and introduction means it's latin it lead in so that's that's kind of what it's for and conclusions Once the opposite again, the fancy co- latin yeah there you're you go reinforcing yeah, your well you know if you t- I had 3 years of latin class. i got to yes. do it, use it somewhere and then the uh, the back end of that is conclusion which is so yeah. what Conclusion so, is for the uh, when we were talking about the rhetoric or the yeah, logic. Yeah, it's rhetoric. rhetoric. It's the re- and basically it's, it's the action ability. So after I've proved my thesis to the best right. of my ability, let's suppose you say, okay, Jeffrey, I grant your thesis, but so what? So why do I care? What right. should I do? Is so that's what, interesting because if you're if you were all perfect logicians, if we were like computer programs, the thesis is like this is what I'm going to prove. And you know, if I'm doing a math proof, once I make the arguments, another mathematician would say, "Oh yeah, you, you're done. You prove it. You're, you're done. You're I agree with you. No, I agree with your and, thesis. and by the way, no introduction and no conclusion necessary. Right. Right. Just right. just argument. Just I don't body. have to say how wonderful the world exactly. would be if Pythagorean theorem was true. Exactly. And therefore, but if I'm trying to emote something, I, t- I should conclude and say, wasn't that amazing? Haven't I? Yes. Well, if you're teaching, you ha- yeah. uh, introduction and conclusion is critical for teaching. Right. Uh, that's why often great programmers are bad teachers, because they just don't see the need for either the introduction or the conclusion. And then the grammar stuff is around publishing. It's around right, the, right. the conventions of publishing, right. whatever. So you can kind of see this is a this is a place where you have this ability to, to um, uh, kind of fill in the blanks, and you can assess yourself. If you're in a peer review with other students, they can, you can say, well, let's look at the, you know, the teacher can say, just look at the box on sentence style today. Right. Just give 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 Sal and Jeffrey feedback on their sentence style today. So it was a way of organizing and, and the, the curriculum and organizing class experiences. And so therefore, when the teacher reviewed a, a, an essay, they didn't have to grade every box all the time. This is very cool. Very cool. You have me thinking about things in new ways. That's, that's the object. <laughs>